Hi, welcome to another video. So today I'm looking at the Allegro Microsystems ACS712. Now this device here, it's a fully integrated Hall Effect based linear current sensor. This device is capable of measuring some milliamps up to 50 amps. This particular board is set up for 5 volts, meaning the maximum current I can read on this device is about 31 amps. So from a few milliamps to 31 amps all through here. Fantastic. So essentially on these four left hand pins, the two top pins are joined together and the two bottom pins are joined together. Inside this device there's a 1.2 milliohm resistor on the left hand side. So you've got a 1.2 milliohm resistor and as the current increases the voltage across that resistor increases and the clever part inside this Allegro chip, there's a device where as the current increases, the magnetic field increases. And as the magnetic field increases, the voltage out increases. So total isolation between the input and output. Uh, isolation to the tune of 2.1 kilovolts RMS. As I said, this is AC or DC. So you can measure AC current, DC current in both directions. So I've got a macro lens on this camera at the moment showing you a close-up. I'll zoom out and give you some more details. So at the moment, these heavy wires on the left hand side, that's the current in and out, doesn't matter which direction. And on the right hand side, you see I've got my ground and my 5 volts. Now the output, Allegro Micro System say the output is equal to half of the supply. So if I've got a 5 volt supply I'll have exactly 2.5 volts out. Now the tricky bit, depending on where you get your device from, is there's different filter arrangements, different capacitor setups to give you a different filter arrangement and the output can vary from 66 millivolts to 185 millivolts per amp so you need to put your board on a power supply, unless of course you know what it is. This board, I don't know what the output value was, so I'll put it on a power supply, measure the output and we go from there. So as I say, if I've got 5 volts here, I'm looking to have 2.5 volts here before I pass any current through the device. This is the supply from one side of my power supply. This is These two leads I'm going to pass the current. This is the 5 volt regulated supply on the right and what I'll do, I'll clip my voltage meter to this middle pin. Right, so I've connected my meter lead to this middle pin, that's the positive out. I've got the meter connected to ground. So you can see here, this is the output, 2.5 volts. I've had to breathe on this voltage control over here just to get the exactly 2.5 volts. So that's my 5 volt input, that's half of the supply out as the data sheet says and this side of the power supply I'm going to be supplying the current through the device. So the device is literally going to be shorting out this power supply on the right. So it's important you need a regulated power supply or power supply you know the voltage off. So any current is going to be minus this 2.5. So if I turn the current up, slowly, so if I try and get it on 100 milliamps, you can see that's fluctuating between 0.7 and 0.8 of a volt. I've already done some tests. With the filter set up on this particular board from China, I've got it's actually about 0.76 of a volt per 100 milliamps. So you call it, we'll call it 0.8 of a volt per 100 milliamps. So if I now wind it up, 200, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now we'll set it exactly on 1 amp. Now I've already tested this power supply. I know that's 1 amp. This should show 
So that's one amp, and you can see we've got 76, so 76 millivolts. I'll turn it down. So I measured this earlier. 0.99 is exactly one amp on this meter. So you can see at one amp we've got 76 millivolts. So at 100 millivolts, that would be 7.6 millivolts. But you saw I can't get another decimal place. If I wind it back down so you understand. So 100 milliamps, you've got 0.8. So that would be 0.8 something. Or you can see, so 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So I think it's actually 2.5076 is 100 milliamps. But as I say, I'm calling it 0 0.8 per 100 milliamps. Wind it up to one amp, you'd expect to see 2.58. Tad under. Somewhere there, but you can see we've got 76, 2.5, 76, so 76 millivolts. So I'm guessing this device with this filter set up 76 millivolts per 1 amp. If I wind this up to 2 amps, you can see we've got 2.652 so that's now sat on 2 amps so we had 76 millivolts at 1 amp so now this was 2.5 so look now 2.652 so 76 and 76 152 so that's gone up by 2 amps and you can see there on the power supply 2 amps unfortunately this power supply won't go any higher you can see it's gone up to 2.1, but I could parallel the output and get 4 amps, but unfortunately this side is driving the device at 5 volts. So because this device is running at only 5 volts, it's capable of being run up to 8 volts. At 5 volts, if we've got roughly 8 millivolts per 100 milliamps, or 80 millivolts per 1 amp, or in this case 76 millivolts per 1 amp, this is going to start clipping when it gets up near the 5 volt supply. So on this particular device at 5 volts, I can measure just over 31 amps. Fantastic. Well, the fan on this power supply has just come on, cool it down. Right, so that's back to roughly 2.5 two volts, 2.499. So that's with the current blowing through those two red heavy leads in one direction. So if I now swap the leads around, so the current is flowing the other way. Now if you watch the meter, so we're starting at 2.499, call it 2.5. If I increase the current again. And you can see the voltage is dropping. So if I leave on 2 amps, that will do there. So you can see we've come down from 2.5 volts, we're now 2.345. So it's bi-directional, it measures the current in both directions. And as microsystem, as Allegro Microsystems say, you can run AC through this and measure the current on AC as well as DC current. So what I'll now do, hook this up to my microcontroller. For those of you who've seen my previous videos, you know I'm monitoring solar panel current and voltage. My previous board started clipping at 5 amps. I had 1 volt per amp and I changed the device to 5 volts, so at 5 amps I had 5 volts. And 
the microcontroller was also set at 5 volts so I couldn't measure anything above 5 amps. Using this device, in this setup, I can measure up to 31 amps. Look for different boards on eBay, China, whatever. You can get these to measure 50 amps. Right, I've stuck this current sense module onto my PCB. This is just an old clock PCB. This is a PIC 18F46K22. Now what I've got, this PCB is wired up to the back of a GLCD clock. Just there. This USB plugs into the back of the solar power charger. At the moment, I've got 5 volts running off my programmer here, so this is a fraction under 5 volts. So what used to happen, the clock would send a signal every minute and tell this to send the current and voltage via Bluetooth. But then, if you see my later videos, my PIC32 downstairs with the 7 inch screen now sends a signal via Bluetooth and requests the solar panel current. This is these Bluetooth bi-directional. I've got it running off 5 volts. I've got two 1K resistors in line with the transmit receive pins. So I'm now requesting data from this. This is just a standalone board, 5 volts in. I request data and this sends the current and voltage. If you hadn't seen my other videos on voltage dividers, I said you go and have a look. This is a bank of six resistors. I think they're 1K each. So it's a bank of six resistors and I'm tapping off the voltage of this second to last resistor. So that's reading up to 20 volts off the solar panel. All my solar panels are in parallel. Up to 20 volts off the solar panels, that's running into this 5 volt microcontroller. I'm reading the solar panel voltage and now obviously with this device reading the current up to 31 amps. As I say this is a 5 volt supply, that's a 5 volt supply. If you want to measure 50 amps you, have, you need to run this up to near 8 volts. Obviously with an output of 2.5 volts it can only swing up to 5 volts. So that will give you 31 amps. If you want to measure 50 amps You've got to put a higher voltage on this, but then you run into the problems. These microcontrollers can only run 5, 5.5 volts. Obviously the PIC32 is run at 3.3, so you'd have to do some, some more, put some more resistors in line in series. So what I do here, measure the voltage using standard ADC, and then once I've got the voltage, transmit it via Bluetooth, do the processing down this end on the PIC32, and multiply the voltage by 6 because of these 6 resistors. So now the current you saw earlier for every 1 amp we're getting 80 millivolts. Let me show you on the screen what I've done. So just in the background here is my regular clock and that's just sent the request for the current and voltage but obviously I've got no voltage because I'm shorting the leads out to run current through it. And hopefully you can just see down there I've got 1.069158 amps. This is floating the current down here, so I get lots of decimal places. So 1.069. And as I said earlier, I measured this power supply earlier before the demonstration. So look, 0.99 milliamps. It's actually 1.000 milliamps. So 1,000 milliamps, one amp. So this video isn't really about Bluetooth strings, but I'll give you a quick demo. So when two of the strings come in, one's for solar panel current, one's for solar panel voltage, and using the earlier passing, I kept the length of the message the same, which just made it easier to send via Bluetooth. So this current is solar. So I've got three bits of data coming in. If you run up to the supply voltage on your ADC, you will have four bits of data, but I've just got three bits of data. These are the three strings coming in. So I'm doing no processing on the microcontroller upstairs. It's all done on this chip down here. So that's the first digit multiplied by 100 to shift it left two places. Then the middle digit multiplied by 10. And then the last digit. Now you could put this equation in one line, but I've kept it simple just for demonstration purposes. So the current is equal to 5 volts divided by 1023. 
times the current, so that's the input. And then the current is equal to the current minus 2.5, because we started off with 2.5 before we've got any current. And then the current is equal to the current divided by 0 0.08. And then that's all I'm doing, float to string, current, current string. And you saw the current on the TFT. Well, I've just put that board back on the solar panel charger. So you can see it's partly cloudy, as you can see the sun coming up behind me. And look, we've got 2.96 amps, 12.3 volts on the solar panel, gives us 36 watts. At today's date, Saturday, that's the outside temperature. This is forecast coming in. If you're not familiar how I get this data off the internet, have a look at my previous videos. If you want to know about more about UART strings, that sort of stuff, or voltage current conversion, have a look at my other videos. I've even got videos showing you how to get this TFT working and the touchscreen controller. Right, six seconds we'll get some more data. There we go, 1.86 amps, 22 watts. And as I say, I upload that to ThingSpeak. You get a graph on the internet, all free of charge. If you want to know any of what I've discussed, have a look through my videos. Thank you very much.